quick disclaimer at the start of this video the footage that you're watching whilst i talk over this is unedited and it's all the footage that i got on the day using my drone it's brilliant footage it's just something to put in the background for you to watch while we discuss hello and welcome to a new video everyone i hope you're all doing well today i thought that i would make a response video to my own strid video as there's been a lot of questions around what I've been doing there, which if you haven't already seen the video, it'll be in the description below. And I recommend that you go watch that first so you have some context to what we're going to discuss in this one. Or you can watch it afterwards, either way would be fine, to be honest. Now, to clear up the basics first, the device I used is called the Deeper Pro, which it, it was £140 around that, I can't exactly remember the, the price or if in dollars that it's about 200 maybe 220 dollars if you're in the us it's its purpose is actually for fishing um uh, to, to map out the bottom of large lakes or even the ocean it can be used for uh, it detects fish and it shows them on your phone screen where they are it goes up to 80 meters deep and has two modes these two modes are a 15 degree mode which basically shoots the signal straight down and it also has a 45 degree mode that detects a wider area but doesn't go as deep. I was using it on the 15 degree mode throughout the video to get as deep as possible and also at 45 degree mode because the walls of the strid at least at the shallower depths are obviously very close you know they're only about a meter and a half to two meters wide that means that when it was on the 45 degree it just kept bouncing straight off the side of the the rock banks and it wasn't getting it was it was being it was acting really strange so I, as soon as i put it on the 15 degree one it started detecting the, the actual levels very consistently now people have asked a lot of questions about this sonar device and how confident that I personally am that the readings are correct. I only have my own experience, so I've summarized it into two ways. The reason I think the reason the readings are correct are because I use this sonar device for about an hour and a half in this river in various locations, which you didn't see on in on the on the final version of the video. You only seen short clips of this that were highlights I thought were interesting. In the deep section that I logged at, at 65 meters deep, I actually had more readings than just 65. People were concerned that it was just reading 65 and it was maybe stuck at that because it might have been reading incorrectly. That wasn't actually the case as it actually showed readings of 58, 59, 60, 62 and 63 meters all in that small area it would hold steady at each depth reading until i physically moved the sonar ball two to three inches in a different direction to check a new depth at which point it would read a different depth i also went back over the sections to double check the device would jump back to the reading it was detecting previously giving me more confidence that it was in fact a true reading so on the final version of the video that you've all watched i only showed you the 65 meters because that that was what obviously got me really excited at the time but in fact i actually got more than just 65 i got multiple readings multiple depth multiple depth readings that consistently measured that depth in those same locations that i would put the sonar ball back over so I read 65 meters multiple times and then I would move it three or four inches and I would get like 58 meters and then I would move it a little bit further and I would get like 62 meters. So it wasn't just, you know, I would I would keep it still on that section for 30 seconds to a minute and it would consistently read that same depth until I actually moved the sonar ball and then it would change what depth it was reading. So maybe that clears up some confusion around that. However, I do have to agree with some of the comments from people that have experience with sonar and how it may be unreliable as a factual result due to the noise generated from the current of the river. So don't take it as actual matter of fact, but it is the closest thing we have to an answer for now. So 
personally, I will be sticking with the number of 65 metres until proven otherwise, because I'm the only one to have gone out and done it so far, so who's to say not? Also, on that point, a lot of people have actually got in touch with me about the possibility of me going back there to try some other experiments. Now, there is a ton of demand for this, and I agree, it does need more experiments. It's it's such an incredible thought um, of what's down there in the Strid. Um, although I am by no means rich to get all of this equipment that people have been suggesting. Um, this channel isn't monetized. I make no money from these videos. It is all just... Um, it's just a hobby of mine and this was, I was genuinely interested in this subject of the Strid, which is why I went and went and done it. Um, also, if I did buy anything like buying this sonar ball, it was £140 or whatever, um, I almost actually lost it. Uh, the Strid has an incredible undertow and I almost lost the sonar ball and the rod that day because it literally almost ripped it out of my hands i uh, made a bit of a silly mistake by pushing the rod about a meter under uh, maybe half a meter to a meter under the water and uh, i was trying to get a reading of like the overhang trying to like point the ball so it would go under the rock that i was standing on and the undertow is ridiculous it immediately tr I, it almost tried to drag me in but before I'd done it, I actually like made sure that I had my hands, uh, my other hand sort of latched onto a rock somewhere. Um, but yeah, I nearly lost it. So whatever equipment I do buy for this, I've got the possibility of losing it. And I don't really have the money to burn just like that. Uh, but yeah, I'm definitely open to any ideas that people have. A Reddit user named Polaris Radio suggested the following to me. You could possibly work it out using maths and some knowledge of geology. If you took the depth, width and worked out the flow rate of the river at its widest points before and after it passes through the strid, you could possibly run some calculations to work out how deep and wide it would need to be below the strid to continue flowing at that rate. On this, does anyone know how... I would measure the flow rate. I've done a quick Google, but I can't find a simple method at least. I mean, there does look to be quite complicated methods, but physically getting the items there and, you know, I don't want to waste a day, so I would, I would kind of like a solid plan that I could execute once I've got there. So if anyone knows a method that I could use to accurately measure the flow rate uh, that I could do before the strid and after the strid, then please let me know in the comments down below. Um, feel free to uh, put some links to some devices from Amazon or anything like that uh, that I could potentially use for that. Um, now, I'm not smart enough to be able to do the calculations, but I would share it with the people that have asked as they seem they want to study the river, but they just don't have a way to gather the data as they're not from the UK. So I, I would be willing to uh, gather the data and share it on another YouTube video and then also personally send it to these people that might be able to actually get the calculations or get a real result from the calculations that I get. Um, but that would be something willing that I'd be willing to try. Now, the same person that also suggested that also shared some images of what the bottom of the strid could potentially look like. And this was amazing. And thank you very much for uh, even making me aware of some of these images. I'll, I'm sure I'll, I'll put them up on the screen. So we'll probably be looking at them right now together. Um, now, th this is potentially what it could look like at the bottom of the strid. And it was Polaris Radio, the Reddit user that showed me these. Um, this this blew my mind and actually just helps me sort of envision what it could actually look like down there. And it it seems quite plausible, actually, um, at the thought of it. You know, that 
the way the geology on the top where I'm actually standing in the video, there's all these like swirly potholes that have been ground out over time from pebbles grinding its way down or drilling its way down. Um, so these images do actually hold some value, um, I guess, as to what it would look like. But I figured sharing these here with you as well would help you maybe create an image in your head of what the strid might look like. I, I thought it was interesting anyway. Also, I'd just like to take a second to thank all the people that have been really enthusiastic to thank me for making the video. Um, some of you just have been called a legend so many times in the comments. And thank you for the the just brilliant feedback. Um, I'm really glad that I could provide some form of answer to this age-old question of how deep is the strid. And it seems like there is a lot of demand for questions and answers or discussion, literally just discussion based around the strid. Um, so I'm really happy to do more videos on this for you guys and hopefully we can find more and more out and learn just a bit more about the strid together. So I can't really do it without the community that we seem to be building around the strid, around this subject. So please keep commenting down below, leaving the suggestions, let me know what you think, even let me know why some expert, just even if you've got an experiment that you don't think will work, just let me know because it'll literally save me an entire day from going down there and trying an experiment that might not actually work if you've got a different point of view on it. Uh, it takes me about two hours to get to the Strid from, from where I uh, actually live. So it is a full day event for me to go down there. Um, but yeah, more than willing to go down and try some more. So please let me know in the comments down below what you think. And thank you very much for your time. And uh, please subscribe if you would like to be notified of any more videos that I'll be doing on the Strid. And I can promise you there will be more. So if you want to be notified, drop a subscription and hit the bell icon. Thank you very much, guys, and I will catch you soon.